Hello friends, it's Tim here for another weekly pastoral update. And I want to start our time with a reflection. It's really kind of an extended uh, point, an amplification of something I mentioned in the sermon this last Sunday, but it has to do with the history of the gold and silver in Solomon's temple. So it's really fascinating. If you uh, search these terms, gold and silver, in First and Second Kings, you see this history of what happens with the treasure that was used to construct the temple and fill it with the, the, the instruments that were used in the worship of God. And uh, I did mention that there are times when foreign powers will come in and invade and they'll actually come in and plunder the temple. It doesn't just happen at the end with the Babylonians. Of course, that's the most prominent and the most final time that happens. But there are other times it happens. Uh, the Northern Kingdom of Israel actually does that at one point when they invade the Southern Kingdom. And then also there's a, an occasion when the Assyrians do that too. But the thing that's really surprising, I mean, we're not really surprised to see foreign powers uh, invading and wanting to take the treasure from the temple. But there are a couple of occasions, as I mentioned Sunday, when Judah's own kings will go to the temple and they'll take uh, silver and gold out to finance really alliances. They want to pay off foreign powers to help them. You see King Asa doing this in 1 Kings 15-18. He's feeling the pressure from a military threat, and he wants to hire the, the Syrians to help him. So he goes and he takes gold and silver from the temple, and he uses that to pay them off. Similarly, in 2 Kings 16, 8, uh, King Ahaz, this is much later, but King Ahaz wants help from the Assyrians. And so he does the same thing. He takes the treasure from the temple, and he uses it to hire help. And this action is really doubly sad. If you look in the prophets in the Old Testament. Specifically, I'm thinking of Isaiah. There are others who really come after Israel for the sin of distrusting God and going to foreign powers for their salvation. This was a real temptation in that day, as it would be really in any day, uh, when you look at the threats around you, the other military powers that might uh, threaten you, especially if you're a, a small nation like the southern kingdom of Judah, uh, it seems like you really need military might. You need men, you need horses, you need chariots, or else you're going to be uh, just ground up under uh, the boots of whatever army is coming through, whatever mighty army is threatening you. And the Lord had proved so many times that he was able and he was willing and faithful to preserve his people. He was the one who delivered them from Egypt in the Exodus. And as, I mean, we talked about Sunday, he really shook the the nation and he did everything that was needed to deliver them from the great world power, Egypt. And if they had been faithful to his covenant, the promise is that he would always be there to preserve and deliver them. But as is often the case with us, it can be so much easier to trust what we see than to trust the unseen promises and faithfulness of God. And so often the action was to, uh, to go and hire help from the outside. And what's especially sad, though, about this action is that it wasn't just spending money to hire help, but it was actually taking, really you could say robbing from God, taking from what was meant to be a part of his worship and to reflect the glory of the Holy One who dwelled in the temple with Israel. And to take that away and to give it to substitutes, to finance substitutes that are being trusted in the place of God is doubly sad and tragic and misguided. And uh, as believers in Christ, we've been, uh, we've been uh, given so much mercy from God. He, Romans chapter 12, 1 talks about this way that we have received God's mercy and as a response, we are to pour out our whole lives as a living sacrifice to God. Our whole lives are meant to be lived as worship to him for his glory. And so the great lesson for us out of just seeing this example of faithlessness is not to use the resources God's given us to worship him with and to divert them to substitutes that actually can't save us. God is worthy of our worship and he alone is able to deliver us and to meet our needs. So Christian, uh, let's live our lives as a sacrifice to God and trust him alone with all of our troubles and needs. Um, a few announcements and things that I, I wanna bring to your attention about the life of the church. You can find more information about all of these things in the, the body of this email below, this newsletter. But I wanna remind you, first of all, about Sunday morning, of course, we're gathering again at 10.30 for our corporate worship. We'll be outside. This Sunday, we're observing the Lord's Supper. Uh, so we really want to invite you to, to try to prioritize the time if you're able to gather with us. Also, we have equipping hour at 5 p.m. on Zoom. 
we'll be continuing our systematic theology series, doing the second part of the doctrine of Christ. And a note about our live stream platform. You've heard about this before, and, and some of you have already seen this, those of you who live streamed last week. But we're moving from Facebook to YouTube as our live stream service. So you can actually find the live stream on the church website itself, embedded right there if you visit it at the time of the service at 1030 on Sunday. You can find more information about this in the email here, and especially you can find out information on where the videos get archived on our YouTube channel. I also want to remind you about the Christmas gift project that we're doing. It's a, a gift for the Mantons, our missionary partners in Switzerland, and we're, we're gathering some funds to bless them with a special Christmas gift. We did this for another of our missionary partners last year. We're kind of rotating through uh, different families and trying to give them a, a special gift. So information about that below. Also, um, reminding you about our Christmas dinner we're having on December 12th, Saturday. Uh, we've in the past done Christmas potlucks. This is going to be a little bit different because of COVID. We're going to be gathering outdoors and we're going to be just providing the food. So information, again, in the email below. If you're going to be a part of that, please RSVP by the 9th. And finally, I want to let you know about the Membership Matters class that's coming up on January 16th. If you are interested in membership at River City Grace, or if you're just newer and you just want to learn more about our church, more about our beliefs, or more about what we believe the Bible teaches about church membership in general, those are all things that we'll try to cover pretty thoroughly during that class. So we'd really invite you and urge you to be a part. But we'd like you to sign up if you're going to be a part of it. So again, more information and sign up below in this email. Again, that's Saturday the 16th of January for Membership Matters. Well, that's it for announcements. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you all Sunday. Bye-bye.